this is <clears throat> about knowledge management and the intelligence and the, um, that comes with knowledge management, with the cycle, with the qualities, with the processes. For that, once again, we are looking at the division into the four segments that Nonaka and Takeuchi made it. We always start at the left top corner, where there is, so to speak, information retrieval. What are these qualities? And in what way can you measure the qualities in the different categories? First of all, you want to know exactly how timely the information is that is available for people. How fresh is it? To what extent is it relevant? Can you express that in a figure of appreciation? How trustworthy are your sources? To what extent is that information matching the workflow? How decision fit is that information? That means to what extent do I still have to work on that information before I can use it into my decision-making process? To what extent is the interface I'm using self-explainable, intuitive? Or do I actually have to familiarize myself first quite a bit? Um, how do I appreciate the way it is structured? To what extent and with what quality am I alerted? To what extent is the information pushed towards me? To what extent is it prioritized and abstracted when I receive the information? So these are important qualities. Um, if we go to the next level, that is the personal interaction, left hand down corner, we talk about to what extent does knowledge management provide us that transparency into a knowledge map? To what extent does it provide process transparency? To what extent supports it or generates it synergy? To what extent does it generate sharing of information and documentation? To what extent does it help in levels of efficiency or induction? Let's go to the next one. Information upload. The most important one. Okay. To what extent is social media, like blogs and wikis, helping the situation of information upload and explicitation of knowledge? To what extent is this process structured thanks to the methodology that is brought into the knowledge cycle? To what extent are we using debriefing methods, methods of, 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 of job and project interviews at the end? Um, to what extent is that pulled away so that, that it is pulled into the system rather than just depending on people wanting to do that? Um, to what degree are things uploaded and is uploading taking place? Um, is it metadata? Is it tagged? Is there some sort of a version control? And finally, we're looking in the right-hand top corner concerning the data integration and IT. Uh, are we talking intranet, portal structures? Um, if we talk SharePoint, which version of SharePoint are we already on level uh, SharePoint 2013, which is the newest release after 2010? And I recommend that if you say, well, this is, this is not really clear, that you are going to investigate for yourself what SharePoint is as a Microsoft platform where most large organizations are um, uh, using the SharePoint software on the network, uh, the system, to, uh, to share all sort of information and documentation. SharePoint is extremely important and if they are indeed working with SharePoint 2013 or are, are sort of ready to move in that direction as it will be sort of now, um, that also means it shows you the uh, maturity of their IT infrastructure and the way they already have embraced previous versions so that they are ready to make that last uh, last move. Um, what sort of search engine is there? Do they use a fully mature taxonomy? To what extent it is integrated? Yeah. Um, to what extent are the internal external sources available on the systems and how compatible are the different databases and data structures with each other that are crossing these uh, these lines between the different uh, uh, data sets. That all together, that's your knowledge management 
uh, cycle qualities and processes, the way you can express it. Now let's go to the other one, that's a knowledge cycle. Important is in the cycle that you say, okay, I understand that you have to capture your knowledge and that knowledge will be reused, but there is so much more. There is not just that knowledge base, every organization has an archive. Is that archive something on a distance, an obligation by law that they have it there, or is it actually a truly available, workable, dynamic archive, electronic, uh, so that the access is very well arranged, and is that archive a serious part of the knowledge cycle, yes or no? I think it's interesting if, even if you take that on board, if you're talking with um, uh, uh, PwC, you say, listen, tell me about your archives. And they will, they will be confused first and later they say, okay, if, you, if this is what you mean, well, actually, yes, this is how we, how we use that and, 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 and how archiving is, uh, is applied within our knowledge cycle. Um, how is the external information um, applied in the knowledge cycle um, and how is business intelligence available? Now, I think business intelligence, I will, I will tell you much more um, about that later, but basically business intelligence being all the intelligence from your own business, all the statistics from your core processes. So, for example, with PricewaterhouseCoopers, if they are working with a client called Philips, that they not only know how much and to what extent and what sort of business is done with Philips, but they also know um, how much business and what type of character of transactions were made with competitors of, this, of, of Philips in the same areas and how long that was taken, how much money was involved, what expertise was used, what the outcomes were. There is a lot to know from your own organization expressed in data, in insight, in intelligence. That is altogether called business intelligence. These are the four main sources. Basically, of course, at the end, there is knowledge produced, there is information produced, there is data produced, and all these things, except for external information, is fed back into the system. A part of it goes into, into a knowledge base, which is the knowledge cycle. The other parts go to in the archive and into the business intelligence data sets. Okay? So you have to, at any moment, collect it and put it together. And your logical thinking is as good as any. Because in many organizations where I come in, to see to what extent that is done, my hand normally covers a lot of untouched ground where they actually do not map or capture or, or label or store any of these informations and they only think about knowledge management but then they don't think about the document reusing uh, the power of the of the intelligence generated in any other sort from from what you have there but nevertheless concerning the knowledge cycle we of course talk about the mapping the transparencies the best practices etc now there's another one which is very important it's called the knowledge of risk management you want to manage your risks the risks that things go wrong with your business process and there are all sorts of risks all the time um, and you want to understand what is actually possible you want to study your environment all the time to see the possible risks or opportunities coming okay so what they normally do is that they say well um, from our experience and from the knowledge we have from possible risks we develop scenarios and these scenarios are actually responses how our business processes can divert away from the current process in response to risks as we emphasize they will take place soon so we have to study catch our experiences build our knowledge of risks in order to do that so we all the time skim and investigate and look at our business environment for signals and these signals might point in direction of risk and our response to risk is something on which we build our experiences on um, we must have solid knowledge of structural uncertainties that are all the time accompanying the business processes. And what you then do is that you are in a continuous uh, evaluation 
of how things work and you hope by seeing and understanding the trends and having knowledge of trends and evaluating of what you see that you can come with early warnings an early warning means that you are very early in advance of time recognize the start of certain trends so that you know a new scenario must come in place that you have to change directions etc so you're building your knowledge of structural uncertainties that knowledge of risk management is complicated it actually deserves a course by itself on the other hand for this course I want you to have a brief understanding that exactly goes as far as what I just explained now we go to the next one um, this is a, um, a portfolio from an information and intelligence department from DSM a large a multinational chemical plant global player many factories um, their main chairs in Holland I worked with them very impressive this is how in in, in brief the intelligence and information and knowledge surfaces from their headquarters was provided to the organization first of all they said we have core services and we have support services core services were information services and knowledge management now we first look at the information services they said well we got scientific and technological information business intelligence and tailored information consults let's look at these three the scientific and technical information which is very very important for technological companies for chemical for for electronic for companies who do serious hard research they find the information products you deliver very important it's normally compiled of literature search and the analysis um, that department is asked to do trend reporting citation analysis and expert identification it means that they know everybody in fields of interest to them who are the experts so that they know when the expert is talking somewhere published somewhere when they have a citation somewhere that they know where the experts are what they say what context etc that's important citation put the trend reporting is important concerning the business intelligence that's the second category of information services the business intelligence is actually in this case um, external intelligence external intelligence concerning the business and no internal business intelligence from their own business and this is a lot of company profiles so of an all type of hundreds of companies competitors suppliers clients competitor of clients competitor of suppliers they want to know their company profiles they want to do market research they want to have the business statistics of these companies and they don't really have that they all have that in place so they study their own environment all the time and finally from the information services they want to have the tailored information consult that means that the information people the information professionals from the intelligence department or a library or what it is called the knowledge center are actually participating in projects um, they have advanced information responsibilities where they they really inform people in periods of merger and acquisitions or period of product uh, development or things very important they they often call it the tailored information supply so they have a general information supply but the moment you know what you want you're you're developing a special interest then they say okay we have for you a special set of, of information uh, services which are tailored to to your needs okay and then finally uh, there is uh, there is a knowledge management where they say what we do there is that we supply uh, uh, the lessons learned uh, uh, um, we not only capture them we also store them and if you want them there they are uh, we have them in a library so that you can search for lessons learned um, and, and uh, we will do an intake and understand which lessons to bring to your attention we do the same with best practices uh, we maintain levels of synergy in the organization by measuring who's actually dealing with who and how that actually progresses uh, process support transparency in the organization um, we measure 
the level of innovation and how that accelerates and how we can with our knowledge management products um, how we can how we can help to to make that go more more faster and more smooth we help capturing information knowledge and intelligence at the end of processes uh, we do the mapping the sharing the storing and the laboring and these are these are important knowledge management products now that comes down to service levels and I say what sort of service levels when we talk about information products and intelligence products um, um, this is where you actually come in this this level uh, that we discussed before of the value chain of information we can give you lists clusters we can make it prioritized we can make it abstracted and the moment the information or intelligence products do need conclusions it must be concluded recommended or facilitated then we call it consulting products so this is important for you that these service levels are clear listed clustered prioritized and abstracted are information and intelligence products very general but the moment they want conclusions and recommendations or want certain processes facilitated it is consulting work the moment it's knowledge management work they say our service level contained captured stored archived shared or even initiated and even that initiated is then their their top level of what they what they can do the support services are much more general let's have a quick look the virtual library the real library products are an archive sources sources management information research tools so not just the information but there are a lot of tools available to do research they have that all stored so that you do a certain type of research that they know what type of research that is and they can bring that out to you they do search and alert to do circulations of newsletters or other things uh, uh, cuttings uh, newspaper cuttings they can do orderings of, uh, of certain documents or books or, or whatever you like um, articles uh, they do project rooms so you want to do a project and you need a virtual space somewhere on the intranet and set it up not only just the space you want to work in the memory levels or, or the access but especially in the project room you want certain information sets pre-selected available for you yeah? that's the thing they will make for you into that project room you can imagine that that is for a project but that if you want to have a dashboard containing the latest development into certain areas of news that you say give me a newsroom and again that room is a, normally a virtual place where people can also share comments and insights on the news on certain areas of which are of relevance okay and finally bulletins that's for sure help desk that can be product support search support internet help these sort of things and then finally they say support services we give training we have training products and we talk about induction programs for new employees uh, we train people to do good searches or to understand sources um, we train in scientific and technology information settings um, business intelligence and knowledge management training that concerning the services core and support let's have a quick chat about the added value of competitive intelligence and knowledge management um, so there's a lot to say about the business case um, this is just a list that gives you a feel why you want to do it now the added value for competitive intelligence and knowledge management uh, very briefly is as follows as a whole it has to be connected somewhere with an increase in profitability if it's not connected with the profitability for a company they shouldn't do it it must be related with profitability it must have a positive effect it's it's maybe interesting to raise that question when you are with PwC you say what what to what extent do you expect it to make a difference and you often will see that they find that difficult they're not sure if they can say it well that means that they haven't investigated that enough the other one is an acceleration of the of innovation an improvement of innovation even better an acceleration and improvement of them um, all the others are a subset of these I quickly go through them an increase of the quality of the strategic planning strategic planning each company has an annual planning in which all the developments also all the knowledge projects the the, the, the research the mergers everything they plan is then in that strategic planning um, you want to have an impact on the quality of that planning an improved development of the intellectual capital 
you want to increase of sales is one thing but some of the sales are very knowledge intensive knowledge driven you want to increase an impact on the knowledge driven part of the sales you want to make method better decisions you want to have an impact on that you want to improve the identification of new opportunities um, higher professional alertness reduce business vulnerabilities increase sharing of ideas improved knowledge based client and supplier interaction an improved understanding of the business environment you're in a shorter time to market so the time the moment you start to innovate to the moment you're actually uh, selling it on the market that time you want to shorten that you want to be more creative you want to reduce your risks we discussed that earlier you want to have a lower staff turnover you want a quicker and more elegant introduction of new staff um, you want a general positive impact on profitability well that's that's a repeat well it's a sort of a list and it's of course it, you, you can make it as long as you want or you can take the most important ones but I'm, i can be damn sure for your exam i want you to sort of elaborate a bit on the added value of competitive intelligence and here you have some very good clues and later in cases we're going to work on that a little bit all right now is it important if you if you talk about knowledge management and intelligence that you can measure it that you measure it the moment you measure you think of progress or on on, on restrictions or whatever yeah how do you measure you have hard measures and you have soft measures hard measures often have to deal with costs so cost saving is a hard measure if you have quantitative measures we're talking about client data project data staff numbers production numbers time saving and then time saving in man hours in, in, in processes in reduction of project delays in percentage of projects that are on time delivering uh, the, the goodies yeah innovation lead time time to market timely information supply these sort of things that is quantitative measures concerning time saving quality measures is very much knowledge and information accuracy relevance validity accuracy or levels of transparency transparency among people processes relations so how many of these relations are known da, 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 da. That, that transparency we can hard measure innovation speed of the innovation process the flow past the feasibility stage yeah. extent of application of knowledge and intelligence disciplines now let's think quickly about soft measures soft measures are culture the spreading of knowledge management disciplines how many people actually do know how to do knowledge management very indirect way of measuring yeah. um, how's the attitude towards sharing of knowledge and, and can we sort of make that measurable um, customer and supplier knowledge relations to what extent is there quality reliability sustainability uh, um, and then there is for example levels of organizational understanding of certain areas uh, customer loyalty employee loyalty these are soft measures okay thank you Thank you.